Today in the joy of editing, we're going to get a first look at the new Nick Collection 8. This is a really big update, so I can't wait to show it to you. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'm excited to show you the new Nick Collection 8. This is a superb update, and I highly recommend it to all of you, especially if you are a Photoshop user. Because with Photoshop, it incorporates Photoshop masking, which is really cool. It also works with Adobe Lightroom Classic and DxO Photo Lab. And there may be some other programs it also works with. By the way, after watching this video, you might be interested in purchasing the Nick Collection 8 or trying a free trial to see if it's right for you. Just click on my affiliate link found in the description right below this video. That'll take you over to the DxO web store where you could purchase the Nick Collection 8 or any of the DxO products. When you click on my DxO affiliate links and purchase any DxO products, I make a small commission and this helps to support my channel. And when you use my links, I really appreciate it. And thank you. Well, let's go ahead and jump right in. Remember this, the Nick Collection palette? We no longer have this with Nick Collection 8. We used to launch the Nick Collection software from this palette. I'm just going to click X and close this and get out of here. I think you're going to really enjoy this. Now, we launched Nick Collection from Photoshop plugin panels. In other words, right here, if I click and I open up the Nick Collection 8 Preferences panel and every one of these icons is a different piece of software in Nick Collection 8, starting with color effects, moving over to silver effects, analog effects, and so on. Now, just like before, you could come up to the Photoshop menu, click on Filter, and you could launch the Nick Collection from here. But I do not recommend that because a lot of the features like Photoshop masking do not work when you launch it that way. So don't launch it that way. Work from the Photoshop plugin panels. This is the Nick Collection 8 Preferences panel. You can launch any of the Nick software from this panel by clicking on it. It will launch the software, which is not the way I like to launch the software. I'll show you how I do it here in a minute. But this is your Preferences panel. Now you'll note here, open and plug in. This is a drop down. If I click it, we have the choice of sending the active layer into the Nick collection or a combination of all visible layers. I like combination of all visible layers. Now for apply favorites and last edit, I'll click the drop down. You have your choice of applying that in Photoshop only. In other words, it won't launch the Nick collection or apply Nick collection. This is what I prefer because I like to go into the Nick collection. And if I want to alter anything, I can. And then lastly, we have send masks to plug in. I recommend all masks. If you click the drop down, you also have the choice of just the selected masks or do not send masks. If you choose selected masks, it lets you choose any of the masks from the Photoshop layer stack. You might have several masks here and you could just select the ones you want. I recommend that you set this to all masks. And let's say I launch color effects, all the masks from the layer stack will be available to be used in color effects, which I think is pretty cool. And I like that option. So I recommend all masks. So in the Nick Collection 8 Preferences panel, you find these preferences and you can also launch the software from here, which I don't. I'm going to click right here to close that panel. Now you'll note under the Preferences panel, I also have color effects, analog effects, silver effects, Vivisa or Vivesa, however you say that, and the Nick H sharpener output, which is one I really don't use. Now these plugin panels, if I click and drag this out and I don't want to use this one, I could click the X and it goes away. Now I can always add it back if I need to. So for now, let me go ahead and drag all these panels out and I'll just get rid of them all. And I want to show you how that we can add them into your Photoshop workspace for easy access. I'm going to go ahead and leave the Nick Preferences plugin. So what you need to do to add a plugin panel, come up to your plugins, click on that. That's in your Photoshop menu. Look for Nick Collection 8 and any plugin you want. Just click on it and it'll add it. I love color effects, so I'm going to click that. And here's color effects. So now I can drag this and dock it anywhere I want. If I wanted to, I could dock it in here. You see that? And I can resize it. So we got a lot of options here. But for now, I just want to put it right under here. Let's come back and click on plugins, go to Nick Collection 8. Another one of my favorites is Silver Effects. So let's click on that. There's Silver Effects and let's drag it right under Color Effects. See that little blue line right there? When you see that, release your left click of your mouse and you put it right there. So we have the Preferences plugin. If I click on it, you can see it. 
We have color effects and we also have silver effects. That's all I want to put out here for now, but choose your favorite plugins and add them anywhere you want in your Photoshop workspace. And here's a little tip for you. After you set up your Photoshop workspace the way you like it, come up to the Photoshop menu on the right-hand side, click right here and click on new workspace and save this out as a new Photoshop workspace. That way, if anything gets changed or altered in the workspace, you can always go and reset it. So now in Nick Collection 8, we have these dockable panels, a new way of launching the Nick Collection 8. I'd like to know your thoughts on these new dockable panels. Let me know in the comments section below. Let's go ahead and take color effects out for a spin. Now, right now, you'll notice I have this layer with this mask selecting the subject. If I click on my Nick preferences, you'll note that I am set to send all masks into whatever software I launch. So what I'll do is click on Nick Color Effects and click Open. That's going to send this image into Nick Color Effects. And that mask I created for the subject will be available for me. Now, as always, if we come to the left side of the interface and click Presets, you can see here's all our Nick presets. If I click on Filters here or All My Filters, and we still have the Filter search bar here. To show you Photoshop masking, I want to add some structure to the monkey. So what I'm going to do is click on Vivesa. This shows me my Vivesa filters. And then I'll click the plus for global adjustments. And what I want to do, if you'll come over here to the right side of the interface, see where it says local adjustments and see this icon right here, import masks, give that a click. And you'll note that I have this Photoshop subject mask. I'm going to click on this and that applies that mask. Now, if you click right here, you can see there is the Photoshop mask. Isn't that cool? Click again, we get the image back. And now I could come up here to global adjustments and go to structure and increase the structure. And it will only increase the structure on the monkey. Isn't that cool? Let's just add a little bit of structure. And now I'll uncheck global adjustments. This is before and this is after. But what if I wanted to work in the background? You might say, Dave, you should have saved out a background mask. You know, I could have, but let me show you another way around it. I'll click all Nick so we can see all of our different Nick filters here. And what I want is the bicolor filter. I'll click the plus. And what I want to do is have a nice bicolor on the background. And we could change it to anything we want. And I think what I want to do is just for the heck of it, let's choose this one right here. A little bit of blue up on the top. Let me pull the opacity back a little bit, somewhere right around in there. That looks pretty good, but it's going over my monkey. So here's what we can do. Come down here to local adjustments, click this icon again, and we'll click the plus to add the subject. Now it's adding that effect to the subject. I don't want that, but we could come and click the invert button. The mask gets inverted. And now if we click this icon right here, we can see the mask. See, now it's just the background. Click this button again, we can see the image back. And now if I shut off by color filters, this is before and this is after. So isn't that cool? We can change that background. And if the opacity is too high, I can pull this back a little bit. You know, we can adjust the blend, whatever. We can adjust any one of these adjustments here in this filter and apply just to the background. Are you ready for another new feature? I think you're going to love this one. This one is send as layer. And what I want to do is shut off the by color filter by unchecking this and I'll click send as layer, and it says sent to Photoshop as a layer. So that's gonna be waiting back for me at Photoshop, but I can keep working on this image. And now I can turn the by color filter back on, and let's say I don't want the structure, so we could come up and shut off this filter and just have the by color background on, and we could come and send that as a layer. So now we have a layer with just the by color background, and then we also have a layer with just the structure on the monkey. So let me turn on the global adjustment again. And now the structure is added back to the monkey. Now let's say I'm done here in color effects, but I may want to come back in color effects later and do some more adjustments. So here's what we can do. Come down to the bottom right hand side of the interface and click right here. I could send the image back as a smart object or as the active layer. Right now it's set to go back as a new layer or I could send it back with a new layer with a mask where I could paint the adjustment on. But I'll go ahead and click on Smart Object. This way, I could come back into Color Effects and alter any of these adjustments and add new adjustments if needed. Before I click Apply and send this back to Photoshop, I want to show you one other new feature in Nick Collection 8. If I click here again, note it says Include Plugin Masks. If I would have made any masks inside of Color Effects, 
I could go ahead and select those and send those back to Photoshop to be used in Photoshop. Now, I didn't make any masks here in color effects, but if I did, I could use those in Photoshop, which can be handy. In the new Nick Collection 8, the masking goes both ways, from Photoshop into Nick and from Nick out to Photoshop. And that's a great reason to update to Nick Collection 8. I've selected Smart Objects, so now when I click Apply, I'll send this back to Photoshop and it will become a smart object. And now we're back in Photoshop, and you'll note, here's my smart object layer right here with Nick 8 color effects on it. If I shut it off, you can see there's the before, there's the after. It has structure added to the monkey, the by color filter on the background. Now let me shut this one off. When I was in color effects, do you remember when I sent those two layers back to Photoshop? This first one, I'll turn it on. This just has the structure on the monkey. Now if I turn on the second one, this just has the by color filter without the structure in the monkey. As I'm working on my edit here in Photoshop, think of these two layers as different versions, different options of the way I possibly want to take this image. I'm going to shut these off for now, and I'll turn back on the smart object layer. Now remember, this is a smart object. I can double click on Nick 8 color effects and then go back in and readjust the by color filter, readjust the structure on the monkey, add more filters, whatever I want to do. So we have a lot of options here in this new Nick Collection 8. I want to finish up with this image. I'm going to send this into Nick Silver Effects and show you some changes inside of Nick Silver Effects. Now, I want you to notice, you see this layer right here that says Mountain? I've made a selection selecting only the mountain. If I shut off the background layer, you can see I'm only selecting that mountain. And now what I need to do is launch Silver Effects. Now, I will not be taking this layer into Silver Effects. I'll be taking a combination of all the layers into silver effects. But this mask will be coming along for the ride. I'll click on this S for silver effects and click open. This will launch silver effects. Now, if you look to the right-hand side of the interface, all the adjustments are missing here except for film types. This is a change. If you'll look to the left of the interface, we see all the different filters over here, like the basic adjustments, toning, vignette, and so on. I believe DxO wants silver effects to look like the other filters in the Nick collection, which I think makes sense. Now, let's come back to the right side of the interface. We have film types. I'm going to click and open this up. Right now, this is set to neutral. This is a drop-down. We have all these different film types. And notice the curves adjustment changes as I hover over the film types because DxO emulate different types of film. It's a really involved process, I'm sure, to get this to work. They use grains. They use curves to make these look like the different films. So pretty cool stuff. For now, I'm just going to leave this on neutral. But we have this sensitivity adjustment. And I also want you to note over on the left-hand side, see where it says original image? You could collapse this by clicking right here, but I recommend that you leave this original image open because this sensitivity deals with how light or dark these different colors are. And you can see what your colors are by looking at the original image, which is really nice. For instance, if you you look at the original image see the greens right here if i take the green adjustment and drag it to the left i can make greens darker or i can make yellows lighter like this we have some cyans in here so i could take the cyans maybe lighten up the cyans or darken them down a little bit in fact maybe i darken them down i could play with the curves but for now let's leave it at this and now let's look at our filters. Let's say I want to add a basic adjustment. I'll click the plus for basic adjustments. And now here are my basic adjustments. And so here, maybe I want to adjust the dynamic brightness, maybe make it a little bit lighter, maybe add a little more contrast to the image. And then for soft contrast, I'm going to pull this to the left a little bit, maybe right there, add a little bit of negative soft contrast. Let's add another filter. How about clear view? I'll click on clear view. And what I want to do here is just work on this mountain back here. Remember, I made a mask for it. So click this button right here to import our masks and I'll click on Photoshop mountain. And now if I scroll down here, you can see there's my Photoshop mountain. And if I click this button right there, we can see there is that mask. Now, See this intensity up here? If you adjust this, this is clear view for the entire image, okay? This intensity down here is just for the area controlled by the Photoshop mask. So when I increase it, I'm just increasing the intensity of the clear view to the mountain. But if you want to, you can add a little overall clear view to the entire image. So this intensity is just for the mountain, and then this one is for the entire image. So let's just add a little bit of that. 
to the entire image. Not much, just a tiny wee bit, like 5%. Click here to collapse the basic adjustment, nothing changes. I'll click here to collapse the clear view and see we're nice and clean over here. We only have the adjustments we're using. And now let's click on toning, add a toning adjustment. And let's say for instance, we wanna sample out some toning. So let me click on selenium tone. You know, I can increase the strength, but remember, I can send that as a layer, just like I did in Color Effects. So I'll click Send as a layer. And then maybe I want to try like a sepia toning. Let's increase that strength a little bit. Let's say I like that. And of course, I can adjust silver hue, the balance, the paper hue, and paper toning. But let's say we like this, and let's send that as a layer. So we have two different options we can look at to see if we want toning on our image. Now, I do realize this is not a great black and white conversion, but I'm just showing you what we can do in this new Nick Collection 8. And now let's say I'm done. So we could come down here. Remember, if you click right here, you have your choice of a smart object, the active layer, a new layer, or a new layer with a mask. Let's do a smart object again. I'll click right here. Before I click apply and send this back to Photoshop, I'll shut off toning. And now we're ready to send this image back into Photoshop as a smart object. Let's click apply and we'll send that back to Photoshop. And now here we are back in Photoshop with our silver effects smart object layer. Let me shut this off. This is before, this is after. And now let's turn the layer on above it. This is with selenium toning. I'll shut that off. And the layer above that is with sepia toning. So we have a couple options here. We can decide, do we like sepia or do we like selenium? Or we could click on this layer, the smart object layer, double click on silver effects, launch silver effects again. And I have one more thing to show you and that is color masks. And you'll find that in all the different pieces of software in the Nick collection. So right here, I have the basic adjustment and you're gonna find the color mask right here. So click on this button. I'm gonna click right here. You'll note that we've picked out those cyan tones right there. Now you see this link right here. If I take the bottom handle on the left side and I drag it to the left, notice the right handle moves at the same amount. So I can adjust that handle together. And the same with the top handle. If I wanna widen out this range, if I move the right handle to the right, the left handle moves with it. If I click the link and unlink it, then I can adjust all these handles independently of each other, which is really good. And so that's my color mask I've created right there, targeting cyan tones, which are in the sky portion of the image. And I just want to darken them down a bit. So all I need to do is we are under local adjustments. All these adjustments here are affected by this mask. I've created. So I'm just going to take the brightness and darken it a little bit. You see that? So I've just darkened down the sky, the mountain, and the water just a bit. But maybe right there, like minus six. That's all I really want to do. Now, if I uncheck the color mask, you can see this is before and this is after. And now let's send this back to Photoshop. It'll be a smart object. I'll just click apply. That'll send us right back into Photoshop. Well, there it is, everyone. This is the new Nick Collection 8. In my opinion, I think this is the best update the Nick Collection ever received. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Click all so that you receive all notifications. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.